Uh, so Dr. Nancy Hillis is a Stanford trained psychiatrist, um, but she's also very passionate about helping authors. She's been featured in Inc. Magazine and the New York Observer. She lives in Santa Cruz, California, right near me. Um, and I'm really looking forward to hearing this. So if you could all give her a big round of applause and welcome up Dr. Nancy Hillis. In the middle of the road of my life, I awoke in a dark wood, and the true way was wholly lost. These words by the great poet from the 14th century, Dante Alighieri, speak to us across seven centuries of stepping into the unknown and facing and finding yourself there. And what we're really talking about here is the hero's journey. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. So these words were in Dante's book, The Divine Comedy. And in particular, they were in The Inferno. And I read this book when I was 17 years old, and I was a senior in high school. And I was, I was depressed. I was bored. And they would send me into the library to read Hamlet. Uh, because the school didn't have the classes I needed. And I ended up staying home a lot to read Dante. And his words reached me. He was 35 when he wrote those words. I was 17 when I read them, half his age. And yet, he spoke to me across the centuries. And you might relate to that, too, that there are books that change your life. And Dante, Dante's book was one of those for me. And what I didn't realize at the time was just around the bend was another reality awaiting. And you may have had that too, where you can't see it yet. You don't know what's going to happen. What's next? Unbeknownst to me, I would go on to college and then medical school. And I would study art, painting, sculpture, and later have the most amazing experience of having a child when I was 41 years old and then finding the love of my life, and then writing a book. And it's kind of like you're on the edge of something, something new unfolding, but you can't quite see it at the time, and so perhaps you can relate to this. Something's calling you. And I know that in the great stories that it talks about the call, and it's really about stepping into the unknown continually in our lives and in our art and in our writings. And I think we're trying to get at something ineffable and inarticulable and, and mysterious that lives in each one of us. And so that's the call. And Dante felt this call. He was yearning for something. He was yearning for uh, his love Beatrice. He was yearning for God. And in fact, he was even searching for himself. And so we begin to realize that we're called. We're called on some kind of a journey of creation. It might be to write a book, to write a story, to become an author. It might be that you want to paint. It might be that you want to learn an instrument. Or it might be that you want to sing opera. It might be you want to play an instrument in the orchestra or dance or create choreography, whatever it is, something is calling you, something that brings you alive. It might be an expedition, but the problem is that we refuse. We say no. We turn our face away. We're afraid. We're unsure, and we come up with reasons why perhaps this isn't the time. And so we place our dreams on hold, and yet it keeps bothering us because something's nudging us, saying there's something that is really vital for me to express or to be with in this life. There's an old saying, find joy in your life. It's later than you think. And you simply cannot afford to wait. And so finally, you can't take it any longer, and you say yes. You leap, you jump, you say yes, even though you don't know what you're doing, even though you're terrified. 
And this is an amazing thing. It's zero to one. This is a really interesting concept to me because it's this mathematical concept that the interval between zero and one is greater than one to two, two to three, and so on. And to me, this is a, an incredibly exciting idea. Dante said, a great flame follows a little spark. It's the miracle of saying yes. And it's the moment that you bring something to life. The moment you say yes, the moment you begin anything, that zero to one, you're bringing it to life, and other possibilities fall away. This is vital to creation to realize that there are constraints, that you're making a decision when you're a creator. And other possibilities fall away, but others open up. And within that decision, and this comes from the Latin desidere, and it's basically to cut off. So you have to cut off things in order to open up something new. And I believe that this is also speaking about the vital ideas that constraint and specificity are essential to creativity. If you have, if you like look at all visual patterns together, you'll just get white snow, you'll get chaos. If all, you know, um, sounds are heard together, it's just noise, a kind of white noise. That is not art. Art depends upon decision. And so then we get at creativity is connected to uniqueness. And uniqueness is exquisitely connected to choice. It's all connected. And so your choices carve your identity on your journey of self-expression. And it, this really relies upon trusting yourself. This is navigating the landscape of trusting yourself, believing in what it is that's inside of you that you need to express and only you can express. And it's also believing that there are paths for you that will open up, and you may not be able to see them yet, but they're there for you and they will unfold. And that takes trust, even though you're afraid. And so what we're really talking about is embracing uncertainty. It's really about listening to the call. What is it that's nudging you? What is it that's whispering to you? What is it? And finally, saying yes and diving down deep into the unconscious, into the underbelly of the unknown continually. But there are perils there. The moment you say yes, the moment you start something new, you go down into the perils. And the perils are self-doubt. That's probably one of the biggest ones. Inner criticism, second guessing, overthinking, procrastination, and resignation. But there are guides. Guides show up. And yet, well, let's say that with Dante, he had Virgil, the great Roman poet Virgil. But yet, even so, there's the dark night of the soul. And this is the moment that you really have to face on your own because you're actually going inward and facing yourself. And the guides can't do that for you. The, we, the guides can take you so far and help, and they do. But the dark night of the soul, the moment of greatest self-doubt, is the moment that you you know, face yourself, and that's the moment, I believe, where the transformation happens. The transformation being the trust, the inner wisdom, the understanding that comes from stepping into that unknown and listening to yourself, and even just a little bit more trust. And then you return back into your life a little bit changed a little more trust than you had before. And before you know it, another dream calls you, and you say yes, and then you're in it again. The cycle of creation. 
So really, the fundamental aspect of the hero's journey, I believe, is going from the known to the unknown, continually. So let's look at an incredible example of the hero's journey in film. This structure of the hero's journey hues as rigorously and exquisitely as the series of moves of classical ballet choreography. Star Wars. So we have a hero, Luke Skywalker, and we have his mentor, Obi-Wan Kenobi, trainer of the Jedi Knights, and the good Princess Leia, head of the, the good alliance, the rebel alliance. And so we have the call. Years ago, you served my father in the Clone Wars. Now he begs you to help him in his struggle against the Empire. I regret that I am unable to present my father's request to you in person, but my ship has fallen under attack, and I'm afraid my mission to bring you to Alderaan has failed. I have placed information vital to the survival of the Rebellion into the memory systems of this R2 unit. My father will know how to retrieve it. You must see this droid safely delivered to him on Alderaan. This is our most desperate hour. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. So uh, the Princess Leia was beseeching Obi-Wan to help her. The evil empire is causing trouble, and she needs help. And we now have the call and the refusal. Luke will be called, but let's see what happens. You must learn the ways of the Force if you are to come with me to Alderaan. Alderaan? I'm not going to Alderaan. I'm very good home. It's late. I'm in for as it is. I need your help, Luke. She needs your help. I'm getting too old for this sort of thing. I can't get involved. I've got work to do. It's not that I like the Empire. I hate it, but there's nothing I can do about it right now. So that's the refusal, which we all do. But then there's a moment that you can't refuse any longer. It is the moment that changes everything. Your life will never be the same. Oh, wait, wait, no. It's too dangerous. There's nothing for me here now. I want to learn the ways of the Force and become a Jedi like my father. Mm -hmm. And so Luke found that his aunt and uncle had died. His father was already presumably dead, uh, but this was the moment. And so there's a moment when you finally have to say yes, and you can no longer turn your face away, but there are perils. Princess Lear, before your execution, I would like you to be my guest at a ceremony that will make this battle station operational. No star system will dare oppose the Emperor now. The more you tighten your grip, Tark, the more star systems will slip through your fingers. Not after we demonstrate the power of this station. In a way, you have determined the choice of the planet that will be destroyed first. Since you are reluctant, provide us with the location of the rebel base. I have chosen to test this station's destructive power on your home planet of Alderaan. No, Alderaan. 
Everyone is peaceful. We have no weapons. You can't You will possibly... prefer another target, a military target? Then name the system. I grow tired of asking this, so it'll be the last time. Where is the rebel base? Dantooine. They're on Dantooine. There. You see, Lord Vader, she can be reasonable. Continue with the operation. You may fire when ready. What? You're far too trusty. Dantooine is too remote to make an effective demonstration, but don't worry. We will deal with your rebel friends soon enough. Commence primary ignition. <laughs> Well, you didn't see the film didn't show, but basically that was the dark night of the soul when the evil alliance tricked uh, Princess Leia and they had her imprisoned and they blew up her peaceful planet. And the the dark night can happen to the hero or the hero's cause. Where is the oh, rebel well, base? I guess I didn't. Dantooine. They're on Dantooine. There. You see, Lord Vader, she can be reasonable. Continue with the operation. You may fire when ready. What? You're far too trusty. Dantooine is too remote to make an effective demonstration, but don't worry. We will deal with your rebel friends soon enough. <laughs> There it was. But there's the transformation, the chance to go inward. Everything looks so bleak at this moment. But now is the time to go inward and find what's inside. Use the force, Luke. Let go. Force is strong. your targeting computer. What's wrong? Nothing. I'm all right. Only by trusting himself, going inside, could Luke fight this evil battle and come out, you know, ahead with the Rebel Alliance. And only by trusting himself, nothing outside of himself could have done that. And so we have the return back to yourself, back to your life. And so basically, you come back, and we see the hero's journey in art. Uh, Rembrandt, one of my favorite artists of all time. I used to stare at paintings of the man with golden helmet and the girl with the broom and imagine that the uh, figures could come out of the canvas. And this is one of Rembrandt's most famous paintings, The Anatomy Lesson of Dr. Tulp, one of the most innovative paintings of its time in terms of portrait. And he was one of the most experimental artists of all time. 
and here's some just incredible work of his with impasto strokes. So the danger, of course, is in the refusal. Again, for artists, it's always there, for writers as well. So here's something to think about, the hero's journey in music. Imagine that the hero is not a character, but rather a theme or a melody, something abstract. Something like Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. So you get the idea. Basically, the melody goes on a journey, just like the hero. It has an individual character or style or signature. It undergoes a test. It gets distorted, modified, reflected. It's thrown into minor keys or different keys, different harmonies. It gets bent, kneaded, twisted, pushed. It re reasserts its individuality, and then it returns itself, its very own hero's journey. And it's also in play, in childhood's play. In, in childhood, we all were just, you know, wondering and discovering things and stepping into the unknown continually. If you think about hide and seek and you think about peekaboo, these games are about find, going out, losing yourself and finding yourself and being reflected in your parents' eyes. Just like this little piggy goes to the market, this little piggy goes home and so on, you're going out and you're coming back leaving and returning, back and forth. And as adults, we're losing and finding ourselves as well. We're continually getting lost in the dance of the flow and the magic of that moment and then refinding ourselves in our art and in our writings. And so you may, I think it really gets down to why. Why does your art matter? Why does your writing matter? And I believe that it's about exploring the reaches of who you are. It's about being like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz who went on this dream journey and realized at the very end that it was a dream and that what she needed was inside of herself all along, believing in herself. And so we return full circle back to Dante Alighieri who found himself in the dark wood, lost, but he had Virgil to help him down through hell because he was searching for something and he did find what he was searching for. And I assert to you that this journey is about rediscovering and reaffirming yourself again and again in your art and in your life and that you're continually stepping into the unknown. And so I ask you to reflect on all the moments that you have said yes to your dream, your dreams, to something that called you, something that nudged you, something you wanted to do. Somehow you did. Even though you said to yourself, I don't know what I'm doing, you went ahead anyway. You said yes. And so I'm asking you now, what are you searching for? What is calling you? What is the truth that lives inside of you that is waiting to be expressed? What is the dream you simply must say yes to? Thank you.